Terra Viva, a checkup on the environment. I wouldn't mind if this was my own car and I had to plug it in the night. And I also think it's, it's uh, smart that we, in our houses, can start using electricity when it is um, when it's uh, most cheap and when it is uh, most available. Getting the most out of power consumption is the idea behind the Edison project, programming the recharging of electric vehicles at night and controlling how much electricity is needed and when. The aim is to create a smart grid powered by renewable energies to promote the use of electric vehicles. Louise is one of 30 Danish civil servants who are testing electric cars in Bornholm, Denmark. Next year, they'll be the first to test the smart grid. The idea is that when you come home, you plug in your car, but the car doesn't start to charge. You have a smart charger on the wall uh, where you can send messages to a program which control the charge. Then you tell the program, okay, I will use my car next time, for example, next morning. And then the program schedules when the car should be charged it sends a message to the charger and then the charging starts when, when the schedule fits, for example, at two o'clock in the, in the night. Researchers in Copenhagen are part of an international effort to make this possible. At present, consumption controls production. The smart grid will work the other way round, creating a real-time market where everybody will buy and sell energy when it's at its most profitable. You will be able to participate on the market and buy energy when it's cheap, when the wind blows and the energy prices may be 10 cents for a kilowatt hour. You will buy energy and fill up your electric vehicles. And at peak demand, maybe the peak price will go up to one euro or even more for a kilowatt hours, and you can sell it back to the grid, thereby earning money. So idle electric vehicles will sell their surplus energy back to the grid, thus providing part of energy supply. This requires, though, a much faster charging and discharging system than the one used today. This car can go 100 kilometers, and then we have to go back and, and fill it again. And it takes about two hours or so to make a new, a new filling. That's two hours for Louise's needs, but an electric car takes about eight hours to be fully charged. The eventual goal is to get that down to just a couple of minutes. Cars will interact with the grid with new generation recharging cables. This is a very thick cable, so you can um, transfer much more power over it. And because it's a three-phase um, system, you can also have uh, a much more power uh, transferred to the vehicle, so you can in a, in a shorter time, you can put the same amount of energy into the battery. Oscar, a master's student from Colombia, is developing a software that will enable cars to tell the grid how much electricity they will need or how much they can sell back to the grid. As he explains, we're trying to make this software platform more generic and flexible in order to allow any kind of electric battery to be integrated into the grid. More electric vehicles will be introduced in Bornholm over the next 12 months. It will be the first place to test just how stable the grid is as the number of electric cars using it rises.